Trener selekcjoner reprezentacji Polski, siatkarze Nikola Grupić, specjalnie dla wprost, tuż po odebraniu nagrody dla człowieka roku. Coach, I, would, I should say before we start in Polish, gratulacje. Dziękuję bardzo. Your Polish is improving a lot. Well, yes, I'm having a lessons because I want to have a better connection with not only with, uh, with uh, players who all speak English, but but also with the people from Federation, with uh, with uh, journalists, with fans, with everybody. So and it's an opportunity for me to learn a new language. So, but it's it's a rare thing because most of the coaches. Uh, likes the fact that in Polish many people speak English, then don't, yeah, they don't yeah, have yeah. to learn. I don't need to, yes, of course. For example, Stefano Labarin told me this, that he don't have to, yeah. Well, to be honest, um, it, it's also a cultural thing, because um, um, Italians have difficulty learning the other languages, because throughout history they were, they were the ones who were Uh, uh, um, it's it's not a nice word, but let's say occupying the other territories. So the other has to learn their language. They didn't have to learn anybody else's. So you you will see uh, English guys, uh, 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 Americans, uh, the, all Western Europe more or less have difficulty of of learning the other languages. But when you go to the Balkans, where we were many times occupied uh, and, and forced to learn other languages, it's it's more like we are more appropriate to to learn and it's easier. But uh, as I said, for me, it's a, it's a thing that, okay, I'm here, I'm many years already here and, and, and an opportunity to, to learn a new language. And I think the best way to do it is by being in the, in the country which their language is, is spoken, so. Does your perception of Poland, po point of view towards Poland, changed since you became a uh, coach of Polish national team? Uh, to be honest, the the main difference that I see since I was uh, uh, I was two years a, a club uh, uh, coach and then I become a national team coach, obviously, just everything amplifies. Everything is bigger, like it's bigger attention, bigger stress, bigger everything is bigger. Uh, more followers, more visibility, more, more, more journalists, more everything is more. Uh, but it didn't change any kind of perception because uh, it's not like I'm discovering the hot water. It's just, it's just I knew how, you know, the the Polish Federation, what role it has in in Poland and 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 Polish volleyball, what kind of visibility has in Poland and how much as a sport is important. So I didn't, I wasn't surprised at all. Everybody is speaking about uh, Olympics, upcoming Olympics. Yep. But I want to, to ask you about your time, your Olympics as a player. When you're thinking about these memories, this time, what is your favorite memory, the first that comes to your mind? Uh, well, uh, to be honest, just the possibility to be in the village with, uh, with the world stars in every sport. So you could go in the, in, uh, in the restaurant to eat and you can sit by Usain Bolt to eat, or you will see Djokovic or Nadal or Federer or NBA players also, even though they are untouchables, you cannot talk to them, you cannot have a, a photos or whatever, but they are there. I mean, I mean, not in the village, but you can see them. So that was like, especially uh, when, when I was the first time there in 1996, I was not even 23 years old. So for me, it was like, like a wonderland. Uh, so let's say that that was one. That's one of the things that are that are. Um, how can I say? We, we are all at the same uh, uh, buildings, uh, uh, weight rooms, uh, restaurants, you know, and we have like uh, all that um, space that we are sharing. And the second thing is, um, once you go there with with your uh, fellows athletes doesn't have to be all, obviously your sport, but all other sports, uh, you become a family. So when you are in the village and you see somebody with a Poland shirt, you know, you don't know who he is, what sport he is or what category, if he's uh, like uh, 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 competing for the medal or is just there because is, uh, he managed to qualify, it doesn't matter, but he's like a family. So so this spirit of, you know, togetherness, like, 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 a, like, a, that we are all together there uh, fighting for the country 
it's it's um it's overwhelming to me so that that was these are the two things that for me were like when i remember the olympics well the, these two things are striking i don't want to make you old but uh, when i did the research <laughs> i found out the story that i don't know if <clears throat> after this first medal or second gold medal you came to the phone booth with your uh, yeah yeah first one so i wonder yeah, and yeah now we're, when i thinking about this social media all the stuff so, I was wondering how uh, how you remember this moment, this telephone. How well, the... it, it, I mean, I'm I'm saying this story all the time because it just stayed there with me. Uh, because that was the mean of communication. You didn't have a mobile phone. You didn't have like SMS or the videos or Instagram or live stories or whatever. It was just a phone booth with uh, like uh, 25 digits uh, without the phone number, and then it's like you stay there like five minutes in order to digit all the all the all the numbers to to get the phone and then you have oh we have to watch the phone because it's like oh we have three minutes <laughs> that's it so we have to be quick but as i said it was it was uh the only you, you didn't know for better that that was it but um but yeah it was it was for first of all for us like i i couldn't sleep that night when we beat brazil and, and we went through uh first four teams like uh, fighting for the medals uh it was outstanding and and i couldn't even now now i'm a father so i know now from that perspective how it must have been for my father to to uh, like he felt when we did that like what we achieved at that moment even though we didn't yet win won the medal yeah. but it was like we are in the first four teams on the on the olympic tournament so so he must have been proud i mean i know he was so as a guy who won a gold medal and was a part of gold medal team, so what is the key, key secret to build the team for a, a gold medal? Oof, well, it's it's th there is not like a like a recipe for that because then it would be easy. Everybody will do it, and but you have only one Olympic champion. So, but I think many things go inside. Like uh, one of those things is uh, luck, because sometimes. Uh, one ball can change the course of the game. And you could see that so many times that the team who was already winning uh, would lose one or two points in the decisive moments uh, because of the challenge that it's like this inside or outside and, uh, and then you lose. So I, I think in the end, this uh, psychological and emotional resilience to difficulty is the thing that it's, it's uh, the most important. Everybody will come there well prepared. Everybody will come with the strongest teams. Everybody will be motivated, like at the peak of the motivation, because everybody wants to be Olympic winner. So we are dealing with a really, really tough task. So it's not like yes, we are, and I am, aware of the strength of our team, and I know that we are among the best teams in the world. But if you remember this season where we won everything how many times you were really close by losing one set or even the game so sometimes these details can you know this year went everything our way you know but sometimes it can happen that in decisive moment this ball you know doesn't go our way and sometimes the luck has played a really really big role in in everything but i put it in the in the draw where uh, is the thing that you cannot do anything about it it's 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 just life you know and uh but i'm i'm convinced and i want me and my staff and the players all of us to do the best we can for the things that we can uh, uh manage and we can control so we must practice we must push ourselves we want to prepare ourselves to be ready and then when you go to the court, it's it's not only us, it's also the opponent who is having the same ambition, same quality players, same everything. So 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 it, it will be it will be tough, but I'm I'm confident we will we will be ready. And where is the line between uh, praising the guys for their efforts, for their wins and uh, staying humble, uh, telling them that, OK, you did you won something, but there is another goal. Well, this this summer was uh, was uh, was a good uh, good example of that because we won VNL, 
And then after that, we had to go and play another tournament. So uh, I just focused on what we did in the VNL and tried to improve those things without even going there, if you know what I mean. I didn't even try to, uh, um, to how can I say, not to convince them or to take their minds uh, out of uh, uh, the, the fact that we won important tournament. So I was, I was just uh, focusing with my staff on the things that, okay, we, we won and with these, we did these two things, like we were serving and attacking better than everybody else. So that was like statistically, we were the team who had these two things better than everybody else. And that helped a lot in the final result. But there were teams who were blocking better than us, who were receiving better than us, who were defending better than us. So we took uh, the uh, uh, old videos. First, we, we, we watched all the statistics and say, okay, we are fourth in defense. We are third in this. So we have two teams or three teams in front of us. So let's see what they were doing, you know, uh, what they were doing in order to be the best. So uh, we took some things from Slovenia in defense, we took, you know, in USA, in France, we did some things with the, with, uh, with the blocking from Italians. With the, so we tried to, to work on that, to improve those things where we were, let's say, we weren't the best team of all. So we worked hard, I pushed them there because I want, we, this is where we, we, we have to, we have to improve. So uh, my focus was there. And that was the main reason in the end we won the European Championship because we played block and defense like on all other levels. So at the end of the, the European Championship, we again took all the statistics and we saw the improvement in those things that we were working on. Now we have another task because now we were, you know, we are, we are there, we are first in the ranking list, we already qualified and so on and so on and so on. So, so um, I will try to do the, the, the same thing, meaning obviously we'll have VNL bef before and so on and so on, but, but um, we, we will also have to prepare ourselves emotionally for, for what's, because as you can see how many times you heard yesterday and today, everybody's talking about the Olympia, everybody's yeah. talking about, so it's impossible for the players not to think about it, you know, so, but as I said, the best way for me as I was, when I was a player was that, you know, just focus on daily tasks. We have to do this, this, we have now, this point is the, the most important. This day is the most important. So once that day comes, you will be focused on what you have to do on the court and you do, you do, you do your best. And if you do your best and yet you don't succeed in the end, nobody can ask anything of you more because you did your best. So this is my goal. I, I want to prepare my, my guys to, to be ready when their best is needed. You mentioned statistics many times. Are you type of coach who likes to uh, know, likes numbers, likes to seeing numbers every time and talking about them with players? Because there are some coaches, usually older coaches, that uh, saying that they have like touch, they have oh, all yeah, sales, of course, of course. so they don't need uh, numbers. To well, it's, it's the, the truth is somewhere in between because uh, uh, experienced coaches and, or old coaches, let's say, uh, didn't ever have statistics. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it, they, they just, uh, they, they are not, like, like if I give you the tool that you don't know how to use, it's a great tool, but you are not accustomed to it. You don't know how to uh, take the best out of it. Uh, I like statistics, but I also like to feel you know, when, when there is some data that is like, okay, let's see, I will always like to see on video. I, uh, I'm like, okay, this data, the statistically, we are not good in this. Okay, let's see why we are not good in this. Let's see why the other guys are good in this. What, why, why these numbers are so high or so low? So I want to see it. So many times happens that they just uh, um, debunk this statistical data because statistically, yes, you are right. But then you see the circumstances is in which these things happened. So then I try to learn why that happened. And if I have to like uh, to say something, to do something about it, or just don't, don't even mention it. So um, I think it's a tool. 
statistics, you know, data and everything. It's a tool that can give you some indications. And then with those tools, you are using it to see if that's really like that, or maybe it's just, okay, I'm aware of it, but well, let's, let's do something else. You like statistics, but for sure you don't like the current situation, health situation with your players. Yeah, and I'm wondering, that's right. yeah, how you feel uh, seeing, for example, what's happening to Zaksa? Well, um, I'm aware that sometimes there are uh, a club seasons like that. I had a few uh, where it's like you can never come out of of the injuries because uh, there are there are really thin uh, balance. Uh, where everybody is tired, everybody is pushing themselves because even though they had some time off, it's not usually not enough to like uh, reset and start from scratch. So they will come back and start pushing themselves again and again and again. So you will see one, two, three players get inj inj injured and then the other guys has to push even more. So instead of relaxing or instead of you know going slowly they have to push even more so when these guys come back then these guys goes into difficulty so it's like a dog chasing his tail all the time you cannot practice you have to give rest to the guys and then you have the guys who will play all the time and not practice at all so at the long run it will be like they will go down because they're not practicing yeah. they don't they are not, they are not putting the gas inside the machine if you know what i mean in the reservoir so some of these injuries uh, are good that happen now because they will go out of it, you know, and they will have time to come back. Well, whether if this happened in the playoffs, it would be really tough. I mean, Shliva or, or Marcin or whoever, it doesn't matter. So I really hope we gave everything with injuries. It, it's enough. I mean, it's 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 okay. That's uh, I really hope uh, um, nobody will have any serious injuries from now on, and uh, and because that would be really a tough situation to 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 manage. Because because in the end, if you have a healthy players, you can push them, you can prepare them, you can do everything. But if somebody is injured or sick or whatever, then then he will not be able to keep up with the others and and then it then it's not good you said recently that you don't have uh, right now the squad for the yeah but what about a longer squad maybe you have like yeah of course 20 30 oh yeah no no even less i mean let's say obviously i know and it's not like the next season will be like uh, 10 new players who nobody knows who they are or they are young or whatever. First of all, we don't, I don't, this year I don't have time to like discover because you go for the Olympics with the strongest team you have. It's not like you go there to discover some young player. You go there because you want to win. So you win with the guys who won, who have experience, who are great, you know. So uh, I'm not saying it's impossible to have some young player with you, but I'm saying uh, it's not time to discover anybody. You go, you go with, with the strongest team you have, which doesn't mean that I will not try some of them in the first part of the VNL, especially to give some rest to the other guys. So yeah, it's, it's, it's in the end, I think we, we, have to be, we have to be there with the strongest team. At the end, the history of volleyball knows two people who won a gold medal as a player and as a coach, Langping and Karch Kirai. You yep. can be the third. Well, I'm not thinking about it. This It's like uh, journalists, you know, the, oh, well, we, um, when, I, <laughs> when I came, uh, we played against Slovenia and uh, in, in Gdańsk. So, and it was the, the group phase, the, the two seasons ago. And uh, they're like, uh, uh, we won 3-1 and uh, your colleagues came to me and like, oh, but we lost, do you know how many times in a row we lost against Slovenia? I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't know and I don't care because that was other team. I wasn't coaching, the coach was somebody else. They had another coach. I mean, so many things changed and I don't, I don't care what happened before. As I don't, I don't care if I win against everybody, because every single time you play another match is 0-0, you have to start again. So the statistics 
to me doesn't play any role in that in that matter like oh we never did this or nobody did that i don't care i mean i don't know how many times happened that polish national team uh, men's national team won two gold medals in one season if ever so i don't care i mean you understand what i'm saying it's not like oh i'm i'm oh i'm thinking oh now we have if we won the olymp uh, we won the european championship we will be the, I, i don't know and i'm not watching that i'm just focusing on what we have to do on the court and that's that's my goal so i will do exactly that so as i said i'm i'm yeah somebody told me something like that oh you will be the third one like uh, this this and uh, okay <laughs> yeah great do you think you will have time for family well i will have more time for family uh next season uh than i had this one because this one was like five months long we had three tournaments and uh, uh it was really tough on my family i saw them maybe overall two weeks in five months and it was it was really tough so but this this next season everything will finished on 11th of august so we will have some more time to to have together so it's like practically two months more than this year so i wish you to have uh, more time with family yeah and thank wish you, you to all the players to stay healthy because if thank you that, healthy, that's a good thank you that that's a good wish i really have a hope for them to be healthy and then we'll try our best to be the best we can be when our best is needed moim państwa gościem był nikola grbić trener reprezentacji polski siatkarzy Laureata Nagrody Człowiek Roku wprost 2023.